Good morning, everyone. My name is Kimberly Swati, Miss Swati, and I conduct the library program at Topeka Collegiate School. Um, and I was going to do a live reading today, uh, but with the uh, Safer at Home order in Shawnee County, we just felt that it was probably best to conduct our story time from the comfort of our basement um, and not head into the library at school, although I sure do miss being surrounded by all the books. Uh, so I have some helpers here this morning, Evelyn, and you might periodically hear from one of our cats, one of our two cats, Milo. Um, and we are going to have such a fun story time together this morning. And um, we have two special visitors, two bunnies. One might look a little bit like the bunny we're going to be talking about today. And I think one maybe looks a little bit like the bunny that is also talked about in some of these stories. So they'll be joining us as well. So the first story we're going to read is called Saving the Countryside. The story of Beatrix Potter and Peter Rabbit. Okay. Saving the Countryside. Doesn't that just look lovely? On the third floor of a London townhouse, a young girl sketched pictures of her pet rabbit, Benjamin Bouncer. She also drew frogs, salamanders, turtles, and mice she had rescued from traps. Her name was Beatrix Potter, and she loved nature and the countryside, but she lived in the city. Beatrix cared for her younger brother, Bertram. They were cared for and taught by nannies and governesses. They did not go to school or play with other children. And every day at the same time, they had lessons. Every day at the same time, they went on walks. And every day at the same time, their mother went to visit her friends and their father went to his social club. I love this picture of her. She's studying nature and she's drawing. And it says, and then came summer and freedom. Beatrix and her family and even their pets moved to the countryside. And she and Bertram gathered eggs from chickens, fed ducklings from a spoon, and got fresh milk from cows. Beatrix loved the gardens with their lettuces, beans, cabbages. Benjamin Bouncer loved the gardens too. But summer and the freedom of countryside didn't last forever. I love this image. Look at that. Look at all the lettuces, the kales, and the cabbages. And look at this little guy, Benjamin Bouncer. Does he remind you of anyone, sis? Peter Rabbit. Peter Rabbit. One fall, Bertram went away to school, which was proper for a boy of his social class. Beatrix stayed at home, which was proper for a girl. She was not expected to travel, attend college, or work. But Beatrix wanted to do something important, something that mattered. She often helped her father with his hobby, photography, and together they visited artist studios, art exhibitions, and museums. She learned from the artists and their work. She noticed fine details and tiny differences in facial expressions. Inspired, Beatrix went back to sketching. How many of you go to maybe the Mulvane? or the Nelson Adkins Museum in Kansas City, or the Spencer Museum of Art on the KU campus in Lawrence, or the Strecker Nelson Gallery or Beecham's here in Topeka, and take time and study the art. Look at the interesting details. Super fun to do. Mm -hmm. Using delicate, precise strokes, she sketched Benjamin Bouncer. She drew him from the front, she drew him from the side, she even drew him standing and wearing fancy clothes. Does that bunny look familiar? Yeah. Who do you think that, who does that remind you of? Peter Rabbit. Peter Rabbit. Although women like her were not supposed to have careers, Beatrix still sent her sketches to publishers anyway. She wanted something, she wanted to do something important, something that mattered. One publisher, thinking she was a man, asked the gentleman artist for more pictures, and Beatrix sent more. And she landed a job! Benjamin Bouncer landed one, too. He began appearing on holiday cards, and Beatrix Potter began earning money. 
Beatrix also spent time studying and drawing nature. Using Bertram's microscope, she examined mushrooms. She wrote a paper about her discoveries and submitted it to a scientific journal published by the Linen Society. But the scientists in charge, who were all men, would not seriously consider her work. Sad and disappointed, Beatrix returned to drawing bunnies. But I love this. Look at all the investigating she was doing. Look at the microscope. And then look at those drawings of mushrooms that she created. She was really interested in nature, and she took a lot of time to study it, pay attention to it, and all the thorough details. One day, Beatrice, Beatrix's young friend, Noel Moore, was feeling ill. To cheer him up, she wrote him a story about a naughty little rabbit named Peter, who nibbled grumpy old Mr. McGregor's lettuce and came very close to being caught. Later, she called her story The Tale of Peter Rabbit and made it into a small book, just the right size for little hands. The tale of Peter Rabbit was of no interest to most publishers. One publisher considered it, but he took such a long time and Beatrix could not keep waiting. So using money she had earned from drawing Benjamin Bouncer on holiday cards, Beatrix had 250 copies of the tale of Peter Rabbit printed. She put the books up for sale and every copy sold. She ordered more copies and they sold too. The tale of Peter Rabbit was such a success that at last the publisher made her an offer. Beatrix Potter struck a deal. Beatrix made sure that her beautiful little books would not cost too much. She wanted everyone to be able to buy them. <gasps> Look at that. She's opening up her box of books. She was quite the entrepreneur. <clears throat> Beatrix kept writing stories, the tale of uh, the tailor of Gloucester, the tale of Flopsy Bunnies, like Flopsy Mopsy Cottontail, the tale of Benjamin Bunny and others. In all, she wrote 23 little books. She illustrated her stories with pictures of cottages and gardens and faraway hills, country villages, farms, lakes, forests, forests and ancient stone bridges, all the places that she had loved. Look at that, look at all of those interesting places that she just drew. Isn't that wonderful? Maybe today you'll take out a piece of paper and sketch out some places that you love too. She also designed toys, games, and tea sets, and she put pictures of Peter Rabbit on them. She turned Peter Rabbit into a character. Beatrix wanted everyone, everywhere, to know Peter Rabbit was her idea. And to protect her creations, she copyrighted her work. Beatrix Potter, a woman who was not supposed to have a career, had created something important. She had created something that mattered, and she became an excellent businesswoman. Soon, people all over the world knew about Peter Rabbit, and they knew about Beatrix Potter, too. But Beatrix missed country life. So even though unmarried women were not supposed to buy property, Beatrix bought herself a farm. Look at that farm. Isn't it lovely? They're on the British countryside. And she brought cows and pigs too and Herdwick sheep, a breed unique to the area. Look at those sheep. They are a little bit different than sheep we have here, aren't they? A few years later, Beatrix bought a second farm and she married a man who also enjoyed country life. But Beatrix was growing older. She was changing. Her fingers were getting stiff. Her eyesight was weakening. She could no longer draw and paint in the delicate, precise way that she always had. And the countryside was changing too. Roads were being widened and paved and forests were sold and trees were chopped down and houses were built where there had once been farm fields. And little by little, the landscape that Beatrix loved, the farms, the gardens, the cottages that she had painted was disappearing. The country was becoming more like the city. So look at her delicate drawings that she did. And as it became, as she became older, it became harder to do those very teeny tiny little details. 
And then this is the picture of the forest, I'm sorry, the countryside changing, morphing into the city. So Beatrix turned her attention to protecting the natural world, the world that she and Peter Rabbit loved. She bought another farm and another and another. She bought cottages and gardens, farms, forests to save the countryside that inspired her books. Beatrix Potter bought as much land as she could. Look at all the rolling hills, the sheep, the ponds, the horses. It's awfully lovely. Conservation is very important as well. She took care of animals and people too. And when sheep took ill and farmers could not afford veterinarian care, veterinary care, Beatrix paid the veterinarian bills and helped save the lives of many sheep, sheep and their lambs. And when the flu spread through the countryside, rural families lacked medical care. Beatrix helped arrange for a trained nurse to live in the area and provide her, provided her with a cottage and a car. In the end, Beatrix donated more than 4,000 acres and 15 farms to an organization called the National Trust to make sure that the land would be cared for, protected, and cherished forever. So today, the cottages and gardens, hills, farms, lakes, and forests of the English Lake District still look much like they did when Peter the Rabbit first hopped into Mr. McGregor's garden. I'll show you this picture. Beatrix Potter did something important, something that mattered and something that made millions of people, especially children, happy. With the help of her storybook friend, Peter Rabbit, Beatrix Potter rescued farms, animals, and wildlife. And together they helped save the countryside for all living things to enjoy. The end. I love this. Look at this. Look at this. Look at all the... Ah. I love this. You see the horses and the sheep. The cat and the geese. The ducks. And the sheep, what's interesting about the sheep is that she preserved those sheep. They were a very special breed of sheep called Hardwick, or Herdwick, I'm sorry. And they were almost extinct. Uh, and she helped save that entire breed. So here is what... Look at the difference in size. So this is a pretty big book. And this is an, an actual copy of Peter the Rabbit in the size that she had printed uh, for her friend when he was sick. And so you can see how small the pages are, but how perfect it is for a, a child's hand to hold this book. So we can't read about Peter the Rabbit, the tale of Peter Rabbit, and have our Peter Rabbit and not actually read the tale of Peter Rabbit. And this is a pop-up adventure. So thank you to Nana for giving this to Jackson uh, the year that he was born for Easter. The tale of Peter Rabbit. Love this. Now run along and don't get into mischief. Actually, I love that. Once upon a time, there were four little rabbits. Let me bring it over to this side. Once upon that time, there were four little rabbits and their names were, my favorites, Flopsy, Mopsy, Cottontail, and Peter. Do you see Peter? They lived with their mother in the sand bank underneath the root of a very big fir tree. Our mother would say, now run along now and don't get into mischief. I'm going out. Hmm. <laughs> And then Mrs. Rabbit took a basket and her umbrella and went through the wood to the baker's and she brought a loaf of uh, brown bread and five currant buns. <laughs> Flopsy, Mopsy, and Cottontail, who were good little bunnies, went down the lane to gather blackberries. See? See how they're picking the blackberries? But Peter who was very naughty, ran straight away to Mr. McGregor's garden. Do you see him going underneath the fence? And he squeezed under the gate. <gasps> Peter Rabbit. <gasps> First, he ate some lettuces and some French beans, and then he ate some radishes. Peter Rabbit. 
oh my goodness. And then feeling rather sick, he went to look for some parsley. So I think parsley maybe settles your tummy. So there he is. And oh no, Mr. McGregor. But round the end of a cucumber frame, who should he meet? Mr. McGregor was on his hands and knees planting uh, out young cabbages, but he jumped up and ran after Peter, waving the rake and calling out, stop, thief. You see Mr. McGregor chasing Peter. Peter was most dreadfully frightened and he rushed all over the garden for he had forgotten the way back to the gate. He lost one of his shoes among the cabbages and the other shoe amongst the potatoes. Oh no, see there's a shoe. Oh no. After losing them, he ran on four legs and he went faster so that I think he might have got away altogether had he unfortunately not run into a gooseberry net and got caught by the large buttons on his jacket. It was a blue jacket with brass buttons. It was quite new. Peter gave himself up for lost and he shed big tears, but his sobs were overheard by some friendly sparrows who flew to him in great excitement and implored him to exert himself. Do you see the little sparrows? Mr. McGregor came up with a sieve, which he intended to pop upon the top of Peter, but Peter wiggled out just in time, leaving his jacket behind him. Look at that. Look at Peter hopping out. Boop. He got free. And he rushed into the tool shed and he jumped into a can. It would have been a beautiful thing to hide in if it had not had so much water in it. Oh my goodness gracious. Mr. McGregor was quite sure that Peter was somewhere in the tool shed, perhaps hidden underneath a flower pot. He began to turn them over carefully, looking underneath each. Presently, Peter sneezed, curdy choo. Mr. McGregor was after him in no time. And after a time, he began to wander about, going lippity lippity, not very fast and looking all around. He found a door and a wall, but it was locked and there was no room for a fat little rabbit to squeeze in underneath. Let's see if I can pull this and have it. You still, ah, I don't know that you guys can, there we go. An old mouse was running in and out over the stone doorstep, carrying peas and beans to her family in the wood. Peter asked her the way to the gate, but she had such a large pea in her mouth that she could not answer. She only shook her head at him. Peter began to cry. You see the cute little mouse? Then he tried to find his way straight across the garden, but he came more and more puzzled. Presently, he came to a pond where Mr. McGregor filled his water cans. And a white cat was staring at a goldfish. And she sat very still. But now and then the tip of her tail twitched as if she were alive. Does your cat ever do that with tail? Twitches like that. Peter thought it best to go away without speaking to her. He had heard about cats from his cousin, little Benjamin Bunny. He went back towards the tool shed, but suddenly, quite close to him, he heard a noise of a hoe. Scritch, scratch, scratch, scritch. Peter uh, scuttered underneath the bushes. But presently, as nothing happened, he came out and he climbed upon a wheelbarrow and he peeped over. First thing he saw was Mr. McGregor's hoeing onions. His back was turned toward Peter and beyond him was the gate. So there's Peter, there's Mr. McGregor, and right here is the gate. Peter got down very quietly off the wheelbarrow and started running as fast as he could go along a straight walk behind some of the black currant bushes. Mr. McGregor caught sight of him at the very at the corner, but Peter did not care. He slipped underneath the gate and was safe at last in the wood outside of the garden. You see him slipping underneath the gate? <gasps> yeah. Mr. McGregor hung up the little jacket and the shoes for a scarecrow 
to frighten the blackbirds. Sarah, so see, there's Peter Rabbit's jacket and his shoe. Not Mr. McGregor. Sheesh. Peter never stopped running or looked behind him until he got home to the big fir tree. He was so tired that he flopped down upon the nice soft sand on the floor of the rabbit hole and he shut his eyes. His mother was busy cooking and she wondered what he had done with his jacket. It was the second little jacket and pair of shoes that Peter had lost in a fortnight. I am sorry to say that Peter was not very well during the evening. His mother put him to bed and made him some chamomile tea and she gave him a, do a, gave a dose of it to Peter. One tablespoonful to be taken at bedtime. Flopsy, Mopsy, and Cottontail. So that is The Tale of Peter Rabbit, one of 23 books that Beatrix Potter wrote for children all over the world to enjoy. I hope you guys enjoyed story time today with our little friends. And uh, I can't wait to see you starting next Monday. We're going to read books together for 10, 15, 20 minutes a day. So I hope to see you, everyone. Have a great rest of the day. Get out uh, into the sunshine or just get outside and run and play. Maybe draw a little bit. Um, just have a good time. Okay, we'll talk to you soon. Bye, my friends.